So here's where we left off. Um, I like example four, but I don't. Here's, I am going to ask you on your test how much work to put something in orbit, but I think I've decided I'll give you the orbital speed in the question to save you some time. Liam here, they didn't give us the orbital speed. All they gave us was the altitude, 25,500 kilometers. Oh, no, no. From the center of the planet, this isn't an altitude, it's a radius, except that's in kilometers. Can you right now multiply the 25,500 times 1,000? What is that? So I'm going to cross that out. It's going to be 2.55 times 10 to the something. Seventh? Eighth? Twelfth? Seventh? Meters. Okay. Chris, what's this question want me to find? Keep reading. The other key word I would underline, Kath, is orbit. Because we're in orbit, I can say gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. But even more important, there's one more thing. And this is the most common mistake, sloppy mistake, that kids make. And I want to make sure you don't do it. So, Chris, how will I find work, not force times distance? What will I write? I'll give you a hint. W equals. Give me the other work equation, kiddo. So now you're looking at the work energy section. There is another equation that says W equals. Yes, thank you. Next time a little sooner. Yes? What? Okay, Ben, now you're paying attention. Good to go? Okay, I'm going to pick up the pace. Um, in previous questions, in the first work question that we did, uh, last lesson actually, where was it? Cosmic potential energy. We crossed out the change in kinetic, and that was because we were only lifting. We were not in orbit. And the common sloppy mistake kids make is they say, oh, I always cross out the change in kinetic. Can you be at rest and be in a stable orbit at the same time? No. So I will give part marks for finding the change in kinetic. If on this question here, don't write this down, if you do this, unfortunately, if I made this worth seven marks, you've just thrown away three of the seven marks. Don't do that. So I can't do that. Why? Because, Kath, I'm in a stable orbit. I must have some potential energy, some kinetic energy. We're going to find each of these separately. Chris, which one do you want to find first? I don't care. Pick. Change in potential? So change in potential is going to be negative big G, big M, little m over R final minus negative big G, big M, little m over R initial. I have a minus minus, which is a plus. I'll do that on the next line. Does the little m cancel here? No, because there isn't an m in this. Okay, It will cancel if you're using conservation of energy. I think it canceled in escape velocity. It does cancel sometimes. Does not cancel in work. Because really, when we're finding the work, Jagger, really what we're doing is we're finding how much rocket fuel. And it shouldn't cancel. It should take more rocket fuel to put a heavier object up there. OK. So, Chris, we're going to go change in potential equals negative big G. What's big M? Okay, I'm going to write mass earth little m 12,500 all over. Chris, what's uh, our final? Try again. You said to the negative seven. I hope not. That would be, you know, approaching the order of like an atomic di it, it, positive seven. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sloppy mistake. Don't do that. Uh, then there's going to be a plus sign. Same thing times same thing times same thing, all over radius of the Earth, which is uh, six point three eight times ten 
to the sixth. Also notice I did the diagram a little differently. I turned the rocket in its final position sideways so that you can see, that's me trying to show you, oh, it's in orbit, ish. We said it's way easier to go one term at a time and you absolutely need to practice these on your calculator. So if you want to get your calculator out, let's crunch the first term. Negative, big G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. Make sure you know where you can find those in case you forget. 12,500 divided by 2.55 scientific notation button seven. I get negative 1.9552, I'll carry five sig figs times 10 to the 11th. And then there's a plus sign. Get that okay, Sam? Yeah, it's because you got a bit of a cheap calculator there, don't you? I'll pause and let you catch it. Am I right? If I made a mistake, tell me now. You got same as me? Okay, got at least one. I got, I'll get some. Aman, you got same as me? Yeah. That worries me. Aman, you got same as me? Okay. Got there okay now? Yeah. Okay. And then we use our backspace edit trick. I delete the negative, and R is just going to be 6.38 times 10 to the sixth. Positive. 7.8148, 7.8148 times 10 to the 11th. So it's going to be negative 1.9552, scientific notation button 11, plus 7.8148, scientific notation button 11. Oh no, Calvin, use your answer button. Jeez, that was dumb of me. Extra typing for less accuracy. Tough. Do you get 5.8596 times 10 to the 11th? 5.8596. 5.8596. This is big because our previous ones have been in the 10 to the 10th, and the reason is this rocket is very high. It, I moved it way out there. Is that okay? Are you lying? No, no. Okay. Uh, I'll put a box around that so I don't have to go hunting. Ben, what did we just find? The change in? Change in? Change in potential. What else do we still need to find? To so go to the very first line? But how do we find the work? Read me the other side. Can you read to me that? Which we found? Plus? Do we know the change in kinetic energy yet? So what else do we still have to find? Okay, change in kinetic energy. I often just kind of draw a line to let myself find things easier because this is a lot of work, no pun intended. This is just a lot of actual writing work. Then what's change in anything? So the change in kinetic is going to be a half m v final squared minus a half m v initial squared. We did say we did say that we're going to be launching from Santa Claus Workshop or Superman's Fortress of Solitude. We're, we're launching from the North Pole or the South Pole, but there's nothing as romantic on the South Pole for some reason, so we'll go Superman or Santa Claus, depending on your preference. In other words, we did say VI was zero, but I did explain to you that actually it's not zero. What, what did we decide was the best place to launch from if we had our choice? Where on Earth was actually the best place to launch from? The equator. The equator. Again, that's why Elon Musk is trying to land on ships which he has managed to do. I don't know if they've been able to successfully launch from a ship. It's really difficult because the ocean is moving. You, it's tough to launch a pinpoint accuracy rocket 
from a wobbling surface. So they might not pull that one off, but they might simply say, hey, we'll buy a small island near the equator and we'll turn that into Earth's rocket launch area. Well, what's little m, Ben? What's our speed in orbit? Uh-oh, I didn't give it to you. And that's why I said this is the longest question of the year. On the test, I will give you the orbital speed. What did I just say? What two words did I say? Orbital what? Did I say orbit? Well, then you could also say gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. I can also say big G, big M, little m over R squared equals m v squared over r. I'm pretty sure I want the v squared over r because I want to get the orbital speed. Here, the little m does cancel. Here, one of the r's cancels. You know what? I was going to square root, but Ben, what do I have on the v in this equation right here? Why don't I just put big G, big M over R in for the V squared? Because otherwise I would square root this thing, but then I would square it right away over here. So I'm going to actually get the V squared by itself because it is a V squared sitting here. So the change in, kin oh, change colors, Mr. Duke. The change in kinetic energy is going to be a half little m, and then I guess V squared is big G, big M over R. Pause. Get your calculator out. I don't know if you can go back two lines on your calculator. If you can, I do already have big G, big M typed here already. I, oh, and little m typed here already. It seems to me I could just insert a 0.5 times. There's the 1 half. And, oh, that r, is that r earth or r orb? Well, it's v final, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be r final, which was... 2.55 times 10 to the 7th. How many of you can bring back two lines? Like how many of you can go back multiple lines? Only a couple of you? Okay. Probably more of you can than like, I, I'm pretty sure, Paige, the Casios, the new ones can. You might just need to read the manual somewhere because I don't see why they wouldn't have a memory stack. And again, it's not that much work to type it from scratch, I'm on, but I'm lazy and organized because I'll know I'll make less mistakes if I do it that way. Hey, do you get uh, 9.7761 times 10 to the 10th? <clears throat> or not? I need some confirmation. I got one, I got two. Jagger, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah three. Erica, yeah, you know? Okay. So when I asked that, if more than just the same two people would nod, if you could also give me a little nod, that would help a lot. Yes, I that. Yeah, that always worried me. Anyways, okay. Change in kinetic. By the way, do me a favor. Put a little R final there so that in your notes when you're studying, you know we used R final, not R earth. Because I was lazy. I didn't write everything out there. On a test, I would write all my numbers in. What was it? It was uh, 9.7761. Times 10 to the 10. Chris, what were we trying to find? Okay. We said that work was equal to the change in potential, which is 5.8596 times 10 to the 10th plus the change in kinetic, 9.7761 times 10. Oh, not 10 to the 10th, Mr. Duick, 10 to the 11th. I wrote down that first fraction. At least I didn't make it negative 11, Chris. Oh, sorry, that slipped out. <clears throat> 
So it's going to be that number plus 5.8596 scientific notation 11. That's a lot of work. No pun intended. How much work? Do you get 6.84 times 10 to the 11th? So I guarantee one of the written questions on your test is going to be find the work to put something in this. In fact, I'll probably do two questions. One question might be find the work required just to lift it up there and keep it up there, but don't keep it in a stable orbit where you can cross out the change in kinetic. But I will put one where you're also going to put it in a stable orbit where you can't cross out the change in kinetic. However, I will give you the speed. I won't make you walk through this, but this is interesting. Notice what we got for the change in, actually for the kinetic energy final is really what we ended up with. The kinetic energy in orbit apparently is a half, big G, big M, little m, over R final. Big G, big M, little m, over R final. A half, big G, big M, little m, over R final. Huh. Example five, you can survive without this, but this is kind of one of my handy built-in error checks, Sam. It says this, using the expression for orbital speed, V equals the square root of big G, big M over R, which we just derived on the previous page, show that in a circular orbit, the kinetic energy is half the magnitude of the potential energy. Good yawn. I'm gonna cheat. Instead of using this expression for orbital speed, I'm going to write, whoop, come back. I'm going to write V orb squared equals big G, big M over R. I'm going to square to get rid of the square root. In other words, I'm going to go squared, squared, but I'll do it here. Over here, I'm going to write a little reminder that P equals negative big G, big M, little m over R. You okay with this so far, Sam? I just got rid of the square root because trust me. And then it's wanting me to prove that the kinetic energy is half the potential energy. I, well, Sam, what's our equation for kinetic energy since day one? A half? No, no, just from day one, physics 11. A half? Yeah. So, Sam, kinetic energy in orbit would be a half mv orb squared. Fair enough. What's v orb squared? So I can write this as a half m big G big M over R orb. I'm going to just change the order. A half, big G, big M, little m over R. Okay. Sam, can you read to me part one? What does it say? Prove what? Start with the word the. Stop. Here's our kinetic energy. Is what? Stop. Is there a one half? No. Keep reading. Is this PE, but positive, which is why I said the magnitude of the PE, okay? When do I use that? If I'm doing an orbital analysis, I, well, for what it's worth, see this number right here, the 1.9552 times 10 to the 11th? If I wanted a shortcut to find the kinetic energy in orbit, could have just done that. See it? Now, this doesn't quite match that because I carried extra sig figs, but if I had divided by two, it's a built-in error check, Liam. If I happen to notice, oh, my kinetic energy in orbit is half as big as the potential energy, but positive. I probably did them both right. I don't think there's a way I could have fluked into that. But you can completely survive without that. It's just kind of handy and neat. Liam, what does 2 want me to prove? 
total orbit energy. Well, total orbit energy would just be the potential plus the kinetic, not the change and not the change, just just the stuff there. So the potential, you know what? Orb plus the kinetic orb. Well, the potential orb Liam is negative big G, big M, little m over R orb. And then do me a favor, once you've written that, just to make it obvious, in front of the G, put a one, negative one, big G, big M, little m over R orb. And Sam, what did we just prove the kinetic energy is the same as? Read this to me. Big G, big M, little m. What's negative one, big G, big M, over R orb, plus a half, big G, big M, little m, over R orb. What is negative one plus a half? Because these are like terms, are they not? So what's negative one plus a half? I think negative a half. The potential energy in orbit. Can you read to me the total orbit energy, which is this, is half. Oh, you know what? Actually, the potential energy in orbit was negative. It's half the potential energy in orbit. Again, I use that as a built-in error check. If a question ever asks me to find the total energy, there was a question in the last unit in lesson three. Sorry, last, last unit, last lesson. In lesson three, I think it was the last question of the lesson where I said, find the total energy. And I had somebody come to me and say, Mr. Duick, there's a mistake in your answer key because the total energy, that's just the same as the kinetic. No, it's because, this, in fact, Paige, what's the three thing? What, what's part three want me to show? Okay, so this ended up being negative one half big G, big M, little m over R orb. What was the kinetic energy? Positive one half big G, big M, little m over R orb. What did this want me to prove? Show that the total orbit energy is the up. I think we kind of proved it. Like, it is <clears throat> this, this, and that. You can absolutely survive without those. I kind of have those in my back pocket, Erica, as, oh, hey, since that worked, I probably did both of them right, because there's no way I would have fluked into that. I rarely use this as a shortcut, because I haven't really bothered <coughs> committing it to the forefront of my memory. It's something I almost always notice after I'm done. Oh, good, that pattern worked. I think I'm right. Example six. What we're going to look, you might even want to put a star next to example six. I'm going to try and walk through all of the different cosmic E questions I can ask. And I'm just going to set up how we would solve them. I'll assume you can take it once we get the equations. A rocket at rest, that's important, on the surface of the earth blasts off from rest and rises to a maximum altitude height, to a maximum distance on. Write equations to calculate the work done by the engine. To calculate the what, Yasmin? Okay, so we're going to use work equals Chris's change in potential plus change in kinetic. But Yasmin, it says, assume the rocket begins and ends at? Okay. This would end up becoming negative big G, big M, little m over R final minus negative big G, big M, little m over R initial. You would need to read the question carefully to see when they gave you R final, did they give you it as an altitude at the radius of the planet? Or did they give it to you from the center of the planet? How much work? Um, <clears throat> I could potentially ask you to get one of the R's by itself. I wouldn't do that. Like, I, Sorry, let me phrase that. There is a very good chance I might ask you to find an R, but I wouldn't try and get the R by itself. I would crunch this as a number and then get the R by itself. I wouldn't do the algebra first. 
Note, I wrote, this is how much work to lift something into space. Why won't this keep it in a stable orbit? Why can't you be in a stable orbit right now? What must you have to stay in orbit? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> A rocket moving at speed V at liftoff near the Earth's surface, rises to a height h with no engine use. Write an equation to calculate the maximum height using conservation of energy. Assume the rocket ends at rest but doesn't start at rest. So conservation of energy, we would start out with good old Ke initial plus Pe initial equals Ke final plus Pe final. It does say it ends at rest, so I could cross out Ke final. First of all, please notice, does this question, Erica, anywhere in it say, how much work? Okay. On a test, I probably wouldn't say use conservation of energy. I won't the way this did. But if I don't ask how much work and we're not in orbit, conservation of energy. Gee. Okay. So this would end up becoming a half m v initial squared plus negative big G, big M, little m, over R initial equals negative big G, big M, little m, all over. Did they talk in this question about height or about radius from the center of the Earth? Look at the picture. Did they? OK, so it would be height plus the radius of the planet would end up going there. Okay, What could I ask you to find? I could ask you to find launch speed. Oh, sorry, by the way. Yay! Does cancel. Uh, I could ask you to find launch speed. I would plus the negative big G, big M over R initial over, get a number, and only then would I go times by 2 square root. I could ask you to get our initial by itself, find the initial radius of the planet. Or more likely, I might ask you to find our final. How far did we get? If you wanted to get this by itself, I would convert this all into a number first. I would crunch everything so that I had a single number, and then I would times this to the top and bring that number down. I would not, on this level of equations, try and do the algebra ahead of time. It's just yucky. In other words, if I know how much kinetic energy I start with, we can calculate the maximum height. Okay. What else? A rocket moving at speed v at liftoff near the Earth's surface barely escapes Earth's gravity with no additional engine use. Write a conservation of energy equation that would allow us to solve for v. Okay. What do we call this when you get away from a planet. Okay, we call this escape velocity, which can be a bit of a trigger word. Again, did this question, Liam, say, how much work? So here in the description, I said write a conservation of energy equation. I wouldn't give you that hint on the test. But trust me, if it doesn't say how much work, don't be doing work equals change in plus change in. Conservation of energy. We started out like this. Why was it equal to zero? Well, we're at rest, so what's our final kinetic energy? Zero. And we're at infinity, what's our final potential energy? That's where we defined zero to be. That's that phrase, relative to zero at infinity. Then we said, OK. Oh, sorry, not equals minus negative big G, big M, little m over R initial equals zero.
By the way, we could cancel out the little m's on this line too, but we'll do it on the next line. What did we do next? If we were trying to get the v by itself. What would you do next? Yeah, I would now plus this to that side, and that would give me a half m v escape squared equals positive big G, big M, little m over our initial. The m would cancel. Final step, Julianne? Times by two and then square root. As far as I'm concerned, I can ask you to find three things. I can pr probably, I'll ask you to find escape speed, but I could give you the escape velocity speed say find r initial or i could give you both and say how heavy is the planet that we're leaving get big m by itself why wouldn't i ever ask you to get big g by itself why would that be it? yeah it's a 6.67 times 10 to the 11 okay next jagger what does d want me to find this is not conservation of energy. So how much work you say, it's going to be work equals change in potential plus change in kinetic. Can I cross out the change in kinetic in this question? Dan, you shook your head. How come? Okay. If I'm in a stable orbit, I can't cross out the change in kinetic. This is the question that we just finished doing. I would find the change in potential carefully. I would find the change in kinetic, and then I would add them together, and I wrote, this question is a lot of work. Okay? That's the dumb joke, but it is true. E. Sam, what's E asking me to find? Keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. Read the last sentence, Sam. Okay, what's E asking me to find? How fast. Is it asking me to find work? I'm saying this because every year I see some kid that starts doing this. Is it asking me to find work? Sam, what's E asking me to find? Is it asking me to find work then? Say no. Okay. Don't do that. Are we in a stable orbit? Not if we're crashing into the Earth, because that's not how orbits work. So can I go, gravity is what's pulling me in? Okay, now what? Is there a change in height? Is there a change in speed? Is there a yucky curvy graph? So what will I use for this? I'll give you a hint. It's not work and it's not gravity is what's pulling me in a circle, what's the only other initial starting approach we've used? Anyone? What? Conservation of energy. This one is interesting because since you're starting up there, this time, your initials are the ones in space. Your finals are going to be on the Earth's surface. So be very, very meticulous here, Sam. It's going to be a half m v initial squared plus negative big G, big M, little m over, I'll use capital R because that's what they used in the question, equals a half m v final squared plus negative big G, big M, little m over r earth. That's where the 
times 10 to the sixth will go. Do the little m's cancel? Is there a little m in everything? So what, I need to give you the mass of the object or not? Okay, the little m's will cancel. Does the initial kinetic cancel? No, it said it was moving at speed little v already. I could have had it start at rest to make it easier if you wanted to. Erica, as far as I'm concerned, I can ask you to find that one, or how high we started, or how fast we impacted. Don't think I'll ask you to find the radius of the Earth, because that's 6.38 times 10 to the sixth can also change planets and make it the moon or something like that. Okay, but you see how we put together our approach? Did it say how much work? Say no. So I don't, don't write that. Are we in orbit? Don't go gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. Conservation of energy. Okay. Last question. Good. Let's put it all together. Ooh. Kath, what's part A asking me to find in example seven? I guess we're going to get a big M by itself. Okay. Then you're going to make it? Okay. Well, we're in orbit. So if I need to, I can go, gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. I also noticed they gave me the gravitational potential energy. For part A, I'm not quite sure which of those I'm going to use. So put your pencils, or just don't write this down, look up. Are we in orbit? My first thought, because I'm good at it, I might try going like this. Don't write this down. Gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. Remember, I'm trying to get the big M by itself. I might then go big G, big M, little m over R squared equals M. Which one of these am I going to use? Did they give me or ask for the speed in part A? Did they give me or ask for the period in part A? Uh-oh, I can't use gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. I'll probably use it later on. What else did they give me, Liam? And that, which is the, pick your pencils up, let's write the potential energy equation. PE equals negative big G, big M, little m over R. Let's do a quick check. What are we trying to find again, Kath? Do they, did they give me this number? Yes. Do I know big 6.67 times 10 to 11? Did they give me little m? Yeah. Did they give me r? This will work. Let's get the big m by itself. Kath, how will I move the r to this side? Yep. And how will I move the big G, the big M, and the negative, sorry, the big G, the little m, and the negative? Divide. I think we're going to get this. Haven't used this before, but sure. Apparently, the mass of the planet is going to be the potential energy times R divided by big G, little m. And there's a negative kicking around somewhere. I'll tuck it in the front. By the way, that negative is good because I'll get a minus, minus. I kind of hope that the mass is positive. It'd be awkward if it wasn't. Here we go. It's going to be negative, negative 6.5, change colors, Mr. Do it. Potential energy is going to be negative, negative 6.55 times 10 to the 10th. Radius is 8.85 times 10 to the 6th. No squared on that one. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. And little m is 965. Okay, I have no idea what the answer here is. This is one you should all practice typing. Uh, okay, I'll put a bracket around the top just in case. 6.55. Scientific notate. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Duick. It was a negative negative. 
Mr. Duick, could I just clue in that the minus minus will cancel? Yes, Paige, you could clue in that the minus minus will cancel and skip typing it, but I'll put it in there. Double check my typing, I think I'm right. Are we finding the mass of a planet? Am I expecting a fairly big mass? In other words, if I get an answer of like 3,000, I probably made a mistake, right? Oh, that looks fairly planet massy. -y. See if you get what I got, 9.00598. I'm probably going to go 9.006 times 10 to the 24th. Ben, you got that as well? Yeah. What was the mass of the Earth? Times 10 to the... The mass of the Earth is roughly 6 times 10 to the 24th. This planet is about 50% heavier. Just 9 is 50% bigger than 6. Just, okay. So an Earth-ish planet, a little larger. And I carried the extra sig fig because I'm pretty sure I'm going to use this because I know in most of my other calculations, big M did not cancel. Yeah. You got something different? Okay, let me pause the video for a second. <sighs> hey, Jagger, what's B want me to find? I'll bet you there we can use orbits. Now, Jagger, I'm going to give you a chance to be a hero. I'm going to maybe start out gravity is what's pulling me in a circle, unless you happen to have memorized the orbital speed equation, because we've used it a few times. Nope. Okay. Gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. Big G, big M, little m over R squared equals M. Jagger, what am I going to write? Sorry, I went going really fast. Which version of... Yeah. Okay. Little m cancels. One of the r's cancels. Square root. Hey, Jagger, my friend, does that look familiar? Big G, big M over r. Square root. Oh, what if there was a 2 in front of the big G? That would be escape velocity. Mr. Duick, if I have memorized the escape velocity equation for the test and you ask me that, do I need to walk through the derivation, or can I go straight to the equation? You can go straight to the equation. All righty. Uh, v equals square root of big G, big M over, what's R? By the way, what's big M? Please don't say 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. What's big M? Okay, I'm going to use my answer button right there. In fact, I might even, Ben, just to reinforce it, look up, I might even have done that just so that I know I'm not accidentally going to type out of habit 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. 6.67, negative 11 times, haha, -ha, answer button, divided by 8.85 times 10 to the 6th. That's faster than light. Oh, square root. Whew. A little scared for a second there. You get 8,238.667, blah, blah, blah. I'll write 8,240, but I'll keep that on my calculator. Erica. What's, sorry, I pause. I'm going too fast. I'm looking at my watch and I want to make sure I get this all in. So I apologize if it's just I'm going a little faster, but yeah. Do you get that okay? What's C want me to find? <laughs> Try that again after the sneeze. What's C want me to find? Kinetic energy. Oh, Sam, how do I find kinetic energy since day one? Okay. Little m, v squared. Erica, what was little m? I've scrolled down. Did they give me the mass of the satellite? Yeah, 965. 
And I'm going to write 8240 squared, but you know I'm going to use my answer button, yes? 0.5 times 965 times answer button squared. And I get 3.275 times 10 to the 10th. That's the kinetic energy. Yes, you all have that on your calculator. Mm -hmm. Multiply it by two, go times by two. Is that the same number as the potential energy, but positive? Does that little shortcut error check pattern that I mentioned work? So are we pretty sure we've done all of this correct? Okay, divide it by two to get it back on your calculator. What does D want me to find? Liam, what does D want me to find? How do I find total energy? Take the potential, not changing. Take the kinetic, not changing. And what? Yeah. My abbreviation for total energy is that PE plus KE. So it's going to be eight, uh, six point, negative 6.55. 10 to the 10th plus 3.275 times 10 to the 10th. What do you get? What do you get? This is a good punchline. So once you've written that down, go to your calculators because you get kind of a neat answer. Did you get negative 3.275 times? In other words, this is the pattern that I was mentioning on the previous page. Did you get, was the total energy the same number as the kinetic energy, but negative? That we probably did this right. There's no way we could have fluked into that. You can survive perfectly fine without that built-in error check shortcut. But you know what, Kathy? It's always nice when it rears its head because then I like, yay, I did it right. We're basically done the unit. Now, on Tuesday, I am going to do a lesson. Uh, sorry, on Monday, your block A, I am going to do a black hole lesson because black holes are attractive. What homework can you do? I am going to throw a lot of homework. You have a take-home quiz. Also, because there's so the big challenge I found, Sam, kids don't know how to start a question, which is why I've been yelling at you. If it doesn't say how much work, don't write that down. If it doesn't say orbit, don't write that. that gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. Well, then the only other option is conservation of energy. Especially if there's a change in height, change in speed, yucky, curvy path. Okay, so uh, number one is good. Three is good. I skipped two. Four is good. What does number four want you to find? I would, if I wanted to, as a shortcut. Just find the potential and then divide by two. That's the shortcut. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. Eight is good. Ten is good. 11 is good. We did 13 and 14 and 12 already in the notes. Banked corner. Nah. G is good. Sorry, G. 16 is good. You're finding little G. 18 is good. 19 is the same as 18. I'll leave that alone. 20 is good. 